Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to tell you about our trip to Iceland and our seven day ring road tour. Iceland has become very popular in recent years and people tend to do one of two itineraries when they come to Iceland. Either make their base in Reykjavik and do some excursions from there or for the more adventuresome, they rent a vehicle and make their way around the island's ring road. And that's what we're going to cover in this video, a seven day road trip around Iceland's Ring Road, where we stayed and what sights to see along the way. But first, a little bit about Iceland in general. You probably know that Iceland is part of Europe, but did you know that it's quite a ways away from continental Europe and it actually touches the Arctic Circle? Some other fun facts, the total population of Iceland is only about 350,000 people. That's little more than one small-sized city in America. Even though Iceland is small, they get a lot of tourists. Before the pandemic, Iceland was getting over 2 million tourists per year. That's almost six times as many tourists each year as there are residents in Iceland. Okay, let's get going on our ring road tour. Day one, you'll typically arrive into Iceland in the morning, get your car, and then head into Reykjavik, where you'll explore for the rest of the day. Reykjavik is a small walkable town and there are plenty of things to see and do to keep you busy for a day, or probably two. And if you're lucky, you might even be able to spot a mighty Viking. More fun facts about Iceland, one third of Iceland's total population lives in the capital city of Reykjavik. That means it's only about 120,000 people, and just imagine how deserted the rest of Iceland is. Another fun fact, the basic hot dog is the most popular food in all of Iceland. Alright, so where you at, Bim? So, we just landed in Iceland. So we're here and there's sun shining out there, so that's a good sign. Flew from Newark here, it takes less than five hours. Now, before we get too far here, I just want to let everyone know that I will likely be butchering a ton of words in this video. Icelandic words are really hard to pronounce, so just deal with it. Now, just a bit on our day one downtown Reykjavik. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this church, but it's a famous site, as well as the harbor area, the waterfront, and this metal sculpture thingy. So one of the iconic things to do here in Iceland getting your picture taken in front of the stainless steel uh, sculpture here. Plus, there's lots of shopping. The travel chick couldn't leave without buying this new fuzzy hat. Lastly, our day one hotel was the Storm Hotel. Nothing fancy, but a great location. Day two, you'll hit the Golden Circle sites and then continue on to the town of Holzverler. Many tour companies will do a Golden Circle group tour from Reykjavik, but doing it yourself is cheaper and gives you the flexibility of your own schedule. Primary sites are Pingvelur, Geyser Park, and Gullfoss Waterfall. You first hit Geyser Park, and this is Stoker Geyser. It goes off every eight to 10 minutes. The larger geyser has been dormant for many years now, unfortunately. Okay, this time, are we doing? There are also some nice walks where you can explore multiple boiling pots and fumaroles, which are steam pools that emit volcanic gases. They're actually quite beautiful. Next up, Gullfoss Waterfall. We are walking to an incredible waterfall. This is called Gullfoss Waterfall. And uh, you can park up or down. Down is easier to just walk right to the waterfall. And we're going to check these out. Okay, we're getting closer to the waterfall. We're going to try to the very end and check that out. No 
Upper Falls, and then down there, where all the mist is. After the Golden Circle sites, we make our way to our Day 2 hotel. We are headed to our next hotel. Uh, this would be our second night staying in Iceland. And um, the name of the hotel is called Hotel Holbus Solar. I think that's how we say it. Anyway, and they have these small bridges here that only one car can go through, so we're going to let them go through. Driving is actually quite nice, and you get to experience some unique Icelandic things, like tiny horses and big 4x4 vans. On this second night, we found a great restaurant near a hotel called Valhalla, where the travel chick got to practice her axe throwing. Ooh, and the mighty Viking showed up again too. On day three, you'll cover the southeast coast. There are quite a few sites, so you'll have to pick and choose. But don't miss the famous waterfalls and the awesome canyon, all of which I can't pronounce. Oh wait, Skogafoss. I got that one. Are you working on your balance, babe? It's a little bit wet in here. Where are we going now? Okay, so we're gonna head over to Nether Falls. What's Oops. this one called? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just a big one that you can walk behind. Yeah. Started off on the far waterfall in the distance, and there's parking way over there that you should park there. That's free. And go to that one first. You have to step through some water. And you're on the edge and you can hold on to the cliff a little bit, but you have a great shot of the waterfall. And then all these are just waterfalls coming down, but we're going to walk here. Around, we're going to walk behind here. Misty down here, under the waterfall. Scottsdale travel chicks getting wet. <laughs> wet. All right, this is Skogafoss. Scottsdale travel chick has volunteered to walk up underneath those falls. It's going to be really impressive to see that. So you finished your hike and everything? I did. We hiked all the way up to the top and passed out to get 
another view of the second smaller waterfall. Got the little inside there, got pictures of rainbows and the waterfalls. Nice birds breaking off of the glacier that we're going to hike up here to go see. Okay, walking on the glacier. This glacier was pretty cool, but there's actually better ones further along. We finished day three at the Foss Hotel near Hof. Remote, but beautiful. On day four, you'll cover the sites in the lower half of the west coast. Again, you'll have to pick and choose your sites, but the big ones are Skaftafell Glacier, and Jokul Salon, I think, Glacier Lake and Diamond Beach. We'll also cover the canyon here as you missed it the day before since we ran out of time. This is Sister Foss. Not very well known, but we'd recommend it. It's a short hike up along a waterfall to a glacier lake at the top. Plus there's a placard at the top with a really cool story to it. Now we're headed to Skaftafell's Glacier. It was a rough two mile road to get there, but it was definitely worth it. This is probably the best glacier to hike to. This one's more impressive. Sit out there, and then here's a big lagoon full of icebergs just floating around, nowhere to go. All right, I got Scottsdale Travel Chick to kind of push your boundaries and come up here on this rock. And we're big, huge, what is that, 50, 100 feet thick glacier going on up into the mountain there, huge glacier up there. So this is pretty cool, much nicer than the other one. Next up is Joku Sarlon Glacier Lake and Diamond Beach. This is worth a stop and one of the famous sites on the west coast, so don't miss this one. Hi right, babe, where are we at? So this is the ice lagoon from that glacier. We're coming at low tide, so there's not a lot of icebergs coming down. They're all getting stuck here, but you also can see some animals out there, seals on the water. They hang out here too. If you walk to where the lagoon empties into the ocean, that's Diamond Beach, where the ice often looks like diamonds. There's a small one, and here's a really big one. We finished up day four at Harafna Veller Guest House, which were actually mini cabins. This was our favorite place on the trip. The cabins were awesome, the location was remote, and it came with a really nice breakfast as well as nice owners. We'd really recommend this place. Okay, on to day five. This is a short driving day where you'll have some time to explore a couple of hikes if you want, like hiking to Hengi Foss and Litlane Foss. We'd recommend it, but we didn't do it on this trip. There's also a really nice beach to explore, which is not overrun with tourists, as well as a couple unique sites we'll show you here. So we've had a great morning. We found a beach that we're going to uh, list on our YouTube video. That's kind of a hidden beach because no one tells you to stop there. Great picture opportunities. This beach was nice to explore with some nice sea walls and some rock formations on the beach, as well as some drippy waterfalls to check out too. And a secret beach at the end with some great walking. The beach, the east fjords, a lot of little waterfalls coming down there, some cool rock formations.
After the beach, you can drive a bit further and explore this remote natural hot springs overlooking the ocean. Clothing optional, of course. Here's a weird one. You can visit this town with 34 large granite eggs, each representing one of the birds of Iceland. Finally, you finish day five off at the Foss Hotel in East Fjords, right on the harbor. This village is a nice little place to explore in itself. Day six is a long day, so get up early. You've got a lot of driving to do and there are lots of things to see, like the largest waterfall in all of Europe, a classic little fjord town, a volcanic area with lots of natural hot springs, and more. Yep, just another one of Iceland's waterfalls on the way to the fjord town that I can't pronounce. There you have it. You try to pronounce that. At any rate, it's a nice little village to explore with some great hiking trails in the surrounding area. We did a small one to waterfalls nearby. After the fjord town, you're off to the biggest waterfall in all of Europe. Deddy Foss. This place was awesome, but bear with us because the audio on some of the video isn't perfect. But you'll get the idea. Where are we going, babe? We're going to a waterfall called the Deddy Foss. Uh -huh. I can feel the mist now. They say to bring your waterproof jacket just to walk out here. You can hear the roaring of the fall. Than that, right? Yes. Should we go there? Sure. Okay, we are about as close as we can get to the wall over here. And take a look, and you may get a lot of this on your. to the main falls there are actually some secondary falls a short walk away which are just as beautiful and you can get some great pics like this driving further you get to the heavier geothermal area we made a quick stop hold your breath go look do it right through there yeah finally you arrive at your day six destination of Akuriri. It's the second largest town in Iceland and a nice destination to spend a couple of days exploring the area and taking a boat tour, but we just overnighted. It's also famous for their heart-shaped streetlights. Your day six hotel is a sale your house, which were many apartments and nice. We'd recommend them. Finally, day seven. On this day, you're headed back to Reykjavik but there are still a few more off the beaten path things to see on your way there. We particularly liked learning about the history of this grass roof church and also finding our way to remote Reich Jafas waterfall in its very natural hot spring bath. The travel chick even decided to do a little skinny dipping today. We finished the day back in Reykjavik at the Reykjavik Lights Hotel with a nice dinner in town. 
and we flew out the next morning, but not without a lot of great memories of our trip to Iceland. Until next time, see you later.